Hello, my name is Johnny Vidal. I came to this country when I was approximately about five years old. I was originally born in uh, Mexico, Guadalajara. And so basically I came from uh, immigrant parents. They didn't have a lot. I grew up with a lot of limitations, a lot. So when you have that in your life, you start believing and that, oh, okay, this is not for me. That's not for me until I came here. I came here and uh, Mr. Estrada really worked with me. He helped me a lot. I did the electrical light mechanic class. It's been an amazing journey. Um, first of all, to get into the uh, program, it was a challenge myself uh, due to the fact that I came from uh, an area that uh, education was not something that a lot of people push. But uh, in able for me to get into the class, I had to take a test. Uh, which I did not pass the first time. It didn't turn me down because I would come and look at the class. It, it, it actually inspired me looking at those people working out, seeing trucks from the Department of Water coming, uh, coming to the class, getting involved. And it just actually, it opened my, my eager to be more, more driven. So as soon as I was eligible to take the test again, I came, I took the test. After I passed the test, I, I had a waiting list of two years. Definitely, uh, one thing people need to acknowledge is that the uh, East LA Skills Center carries a lot of weight and the expectations actually are a lot greater. Uh, basically myself, when I apply for different departments, I got three offers, um, DWP, City of Glendale and contractors. Uh, at that time, I took City of Glendale because they were the first ones that, that called me. Once I went through the interview, basically the class spoke for itself. So to be honest with you, uh, not only did I pass the, the interview, but I was number one in their, in their, in their, in their class. So basically they prepared me. Um, they helped me to get rid of my fears, to get rid of, uh, and just nothing but positive things that, that came in. So when I went to the interview, it really, really helped me. And I was very excited to know that I was the number one candidate on the hiring list. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm here. That's one of the reasons why I always come back because I know there's a lot of kids, there's a lot of Johnnies out there, a lot. And mind you, it's not just East LA. It's, I think we have them across, across the city. Our circumstances are, are different, but the reality is that I think it's important, in my opinion, for the district to pay attention to those little things. Why? Because the reality is, talking to a lot of people, for a lot of people to send their kids to universities, it's almost impossible, especially if you have parents that work two jobs. They cannot afford to pay 10000 a year, and that's the very minimum. That's why this is so important for our kids, to know that they still have the opportunity to become somebody, something in their lives. The trades, um, the reality is not everyone, even if they want to go to college, not everyone could afford it. They could put it in any way they want. Yeah, you have junior colleges, but guess what happened? I went to a junior college, I got stuck there. I couldn't do anything else, but that's the reality. The difference in my life was here. And I just, for me, I could promise you, it's a lot of kids. There's a reason why if you look at the waiting list, it's huge, it speaks for itself. Numbers never lie. It, it all has to do with the teaching. It starts with the teaching, the fact that teachers care. But as well, again, you gotta understand that we all have come from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different issues, different problems. The teachers try to get at your level to try to explain to you. And, and again, I think that's why it's important for us to come back and to, to help our kids. In my scenario, um, I was a kid that was very shy. I was always in the corner. I was afraid to ask questions. And the reason why I was afraid to ask questions um, there was a lot of things I didn't understand, but I was afraid to ask a stupid question. And that's when our teachers would come in and they noticed that you were the outcast, you put yourself in the corners. And you know, little by little, I realized that, you know what, it's okay to ask a question, to make mistakes, because the reality in life, and that's one thing I teach my kids now, you know what, son, it's okay to make a mistake. How do you expect to learn? And it's not even a mistake, it's, it's an experience in life. So basically, once I started translating that into my mind, but the biggest thing was me, was I was able to accept it. I was able to, to take it. I'm the type of person nowadays that 
please correct me. I won't take I won't take offense to it. Because to me, if you correct me on something that I'm doing wrong, you become a blessing in my life. Because that's how I become better. One thing I learned is it's okay for you to be frustrated. It's okay for you to be scared. You're supposed to be scared. That's telling me that you're a human. That's telling me you're not supposed to know anything. And they, the teachers know that. Um, don't pretend to know everything because in this trade you'll get killed. Understand what you're doing and take it from that point. You need to understand that the lowest voltage that, I mean, once you're working line work, it's, I mean, you're working between 12,000 to uh, 35,000 volts. So guess what? Your life is always there. Always confidence means plays a big role. So I always tell them, it's okay for you to make. Make all the mistakes you can right here and, 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 and correct them. When you come into the straight, you get a lot of literature. You, they, they give you a lot, of, a lot of paperwork. Through that, you also go through intense uh, training, uh, which is very tiring. Again, even that class, I wanted to quit. I wasn't used to taking orders from anybody. But speaking to our, our instructor, Strata at that time, he would tell me, hey, boy, you don't think I went through it? He would tell me things that make me feel good because he came from where I came from. And he would tell me, look, man, if I could do it all over again, this is what I would do. And something just happened magically in there that, I mean, I hated reading. I didn't like books. And I started changing my thinking. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I would read a page five times to understand what I read. You know, I'm one of those people that literally slipped through the system, you know, literally. And I say it with pride because a lot of people hide it. I don't anymore. And because of his teaching, because of his caring that took me there, um, to the point to where I made it through the program, um, I own my business, I own apartments, and I can honestly tell you that I own the fair and square. And it's all because of this program. I went through the skill center, and that's what changed my life. Not necessarily, no. I, I, I'll be a liar if I tell you, yeah, no. The business didn't come with it. I just wanted to make it through the program. But coming through the program, doing things, um, I, see, I, I always push myself for better. I, I, I learned to push myself to become better every time. After I became, I felt a master of what I was doing, I wasn't challenged. I kind of felt like a vegetable. <laughs> so, you know, again, I come to the skill center with me and Estrada, great friends. And he goes, hey, well, why don't you start a business? I'm like, and what? Well, that's something you got to figure out. And I did. I, 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 water came into my life, right? So I did it. A lot of people were, ah, you're dumb. What do you mean? Look at the money you make here. You're going to do water. You're going to do this. I did it. And we're very successful at it. And it's just the fact that now, again, I, I learned to be driven in this class. I learned to be a go-getter. And that's just who I am now, by nature. I learned to be okay out of my comfort zone. And if I'm not out of my comfort zone, then I'm not doing something right, I don't feel comfortable. So I'm always out of my comfort zone. Well, being out of my comfort zone is normal to me. As a matter of fact, we're even thinking of doing other things now, <laughs> so. It's, it's tough to say, <laughs> but uh, right now I'm just focusing on, on creating this amazing company um, and you know to me it feels great to help out it, it feels great to give uh, give back to our community and to me my community is everybody I volunteer at the skill center to try to work with the kids help them with their interviews um, to help them um, basically do good on their interviews uh, I come, I help them out, I give them time. There's times the kids want to meet um, on weekends. The other thing I, I teach them, but people don't understand about this trade, is that when you get hired, you're in probation for four years, which it means that you could get fired any time. Um, at that time, you go through, it's like the military. You go through a beating. Uh, personally, myself, I wanted to quit, uh, quit a million times. You know, I remember I would come home, I will cry in the shower, I'll be, 
I mean, I, I hit rock bottom. I got depression, you name it, I got everything. So my job is to make sure I come and help the kids and get them mentally strong and understand, teaching them that, you know what, nothing's personal. So basically help them through the process to understand. Other thing I do, I volunteer with uh, Lincoln High School, uh, baseball program, I help them uh, raise money to make sure that kids have adequate equipment, bats, cleats. Um, last year we donated about $12,000 to the baseball program. Um, we also get involved with our kids uh, with uh, Lincoln Park, uh, and we also help with the uh, Christmas parades. Most definitely, oh my goodness, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, it's not just making money, it's can you take care of your money. I used to think having a business was just buying and selling, but what I learned really quick is that a business, a million pieces that you gotta learn. You know, I want, at first I wanted to do it all, but real quick I learned I couldn't do it all. So now definitely I, I, I learned how to make my money work for me. I learned how to manage money. I learned to acknowledge it's not, you could be making a million dollars, but if you're wasting a million point two, then you're not making any money. So I had to learn all those things uh, and it's been a challenge. But to me, that's been the greatest school of my life. To me, I always look at it this way. In school, they teach you how to prepare for a test. Life is the other way around. You take the test, and then you prepare. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I, I look at you as a mentor. I look at everyone. Because if you pay attention to every single individual, you're always learning. It's very important for you to look. I promise you that I learn from kids. I learn from homeless. I can learn from everyone. You just gotta be open-minded to everything. And I promise you, you will learn. I wanna share something that's for everyone. In life, you need to understand that your mind is like the soil. The soil doesn't care what you plant. It doesn't matter if you put grass, you put apples, oranges. If you water it, it's gonna grow. It will grow. That's nature, right? Your mind is the same way. Your mind doesn't care if you plan negative thoughts. Your mind doesn't care if you plan fear. Your mind doesn't care if you plan positive and good thoughts. Whatever you plan, your thoughts is the water and they will grow. So it's very simple. It's always reaping and sowing. So get rid of the weeds. Mainly, I always say, Whatever you learn, keep practicing it. And again, your mind is the most powerful thing. I love, I love how the mind works. To me, the mind is your best friend or your worst enemy. That's just the way it is. Stay positive. I don't care what anybody tells you. For me, from the point I, I applied to the Department of Water and Power, to the, point, to the minute I got hired, it took me three months. And people would tell me, oh, man, you'll never get a job there. Okay. But guess what? I did it. People told me I could never have a company. Guess what? I did it. People say I could never do this. Guess what? I did it. People told me I couldn't make it, so I've been proving everybody wrong because guess what? I'm doing what I want to do. So that's basically what I teach kids. You know, it's not about how smart you are. It's not about how much money you have. It's about being persistent on everything that you do. Just be persistent, persistent, persistent. And I promise you, uh, things will open up. They will open up because that's the law. It's just that simple. I've been very, very, very blessed in my life. Very blessed. Again, it all started with my teachers here. Um, I told you I hit depression when I was going through the program. Um, I started popping pills for depression, but I knew that that wasn't, and something happened in my life. I did meet a, a motivational uh, coach that helped me, and through all that, it cost me a lot of money to go through all those things. What I do now, I give it for free, whoever wants to listen. I pay for it, well, guess what, that's fine, you know? Uh, and I, believe me, I went through psychologists that did nothing for me. I went through therapists that did nothing for me. But when I met a life coach, uh, that changed my life for the better. But if you wanna learn, man, more power to you. If you don't, well then, God bless you. I, one thing I practice in my life, I don't look down on no one. 
Absolutely no one. I respect everyone because I want the same respect. 